Hey guys, what's going on? Megan here. All right, 20 reasons why DHT is more or less important than testosterone. All right, and this one is going to be on the physical signs of testosterone. I can make another one on the mental effects and show you guys which ones are mainly uh, done by testosterone and its derivatives versus D DHT. So let's get straight to it. All right, so uh, hand grip strength, right? The effect that androgens have on hand grip strength. That one, I'm going to put it at testosterone wins because even without DHT, uh, you can still get that effect, right? Mainly through the androgen receptor and obviously estradiol signaling as well, the main estrogen. You need estrogen, guys. Everyone thinks, you know, one hormone is good and one hormone is bad. No, it's all about balance. If estrogen goes to zero, you're going to have a lot of issues. So that one testosterone wins because you can definitely have a good grip strength. Uh, you know, even if you have low DHT levels, as long as you have enough testosterone. Remember, guys, DHT is two to ten times more powerful than testosterone. All that means is that for every one molecule of DHT, you'll need about two to ten molecules of testosterone to get the same effect. Remember, testosterone is a pro hormone. It is a pro hormone for DHT. That's why I always joke around and say that DHT is the super saiyan version of testosterone. I have a ton of videos, articles, posts quizzes about this so go get caught up i have all the studies all the evidence go look it up um all right so now that we got that out of the way let's see the effect of testosterone on your nose yeah testosterone wins right the fact that uh obviously i made a video about that men have bigger noses than women and it's mainly due to uh testosterone apart from genetic differences that one can be done with just testosterone alone Next, we have testosterone's effects on your clavicle width, how wide your shoulders are, how broad your shoulders are. Not talking about muscle mass, I'm talking about bone. Um, talking about your actual clavicles. That one, that one is tricky because you also need um, some amount of estrogen. So I'm going to put that one at testosterone wins. You don't want too much estrogen because estrogen obviously, uh, you know, closes your growth plates, but it's also needed uh, for bone function. So I'm going to put that at testosterone wing simply because DHT cannot convert to estrogen, which in some cases is actually a good thing, but in some cases it's a bad thing. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm, I made videos about this. Uh, a pulse, I believe, DHT does activate the estrogen receptor beta, but that's through its metabolites and blah, blah, blah. I don't want to go into the technical details because there's a lot of beginners watching this. Um, next, we have uh, testosterone's effects on body hair so chest hair and even pubic hair that one dht wins that one is mainly um through dht let's see again that doesn't mean that testosterone can do it like i said earlier in the video you just need a lot more testosterone to compensate for low dht since dht is the more powerful androgen next we have testosterone's effects on muscle mass as of right now testosterone wins and i explained several times even though dht is more powerful and testosterone and activating the androgen receptor when it comes to muscle tissue. And again, I explained it so many times. DHT gets broken down by enzymes such as 3 alpha HSD. And because of that, testosterone is the main androgen in muscle tissue. Again, that does not mean that testosterone is more powerful than DHT. No, because obviously, if you put it in a dish or if you have genetic. Um, Genetic polymorphisms where you're not producing enough 3 alpha HSD or you have ways to lower 3 alpha HSD, um, then obviously DHT is going to destroy testosterone when it comes to muscle building potential. Um, so it's a big, it depends, right? That's the reason why if you look at most steroids that are DHT derived, they tend to be more anabolic um, or less equal than testosterone, mainly because, you know, there's some exceptions where you can make it, you can modify the DHT molecule so that it is resistant to uh, three alpha hsd so but as of now testosterone wins mainly because again you know dhd gets broken down in muscle tissue that's the body it's an evolutionary mechanism to stop you from putting on too much muscle too fast because once again muscle is costly uh to the body and it's detrimental for survival if you have too much of it also the reason why testosterone wins is because you need estrogen uh, for optimal muscle function right that includes igf1 that includes growth hormone blah 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 and again DHT does not convert to estrogen. Uh, next, you have uh, testosterone's effects on men having uh, big shoulders. This time, we're actually talking about muscle mass, right? Again, like I said earlier, that one testosterone wins. You do not need DHT for that. Um, you do not need a lot of DHT for that, I should say, right? You, you still need some DHT because people forget that serum DHT is not the, uh, you know, the best measure of how much DHT is in your system. You also have to look at intracellular DHT. You could have low serum levels, right, blood levels of DHT, 
but high intracellular levels of uh, of DHT. Great example is hair loss, right? When you're losing hair, when you're balding, you could have normal DHT levels in your blood, but a crap ton of DHT in your um, in your scalp. Same thing with prostate cancer and stuff like that. So uh, that does not mean that DHT doesn't play a role in all this. Obviously, it does. It just means that it is not the main androgen driving those features. And how do we know this? Because there's a lot of studies on people that have 5-alpha reductase mutations and they still have muscle mass. Now, to be fair, to be fair, they only have mutations in one of the enzymes uh, that make DHT, right? Not all three of them. Um, um, and then not to mention the other two that research is still ongoing on. Uh, next, we have testosterone's effects on your bra ridge. That one, I was going to put it as a tie because research is still ongoing. We do not have a lot of research on that, so I don't want to talk out of my ass. But for now, as of now, testosterone wins, right? When more research comes out, I'm going to update this playlist and move this higher. Now, we do know that this is driven by the androgen receptor, so therefore DHT should have a more powerful effect on that. But uh, like I said, we don't have a lot of research. So in fact, you know what? Since we don't have a lot of research, I'm going to go with the theoretical model. Based on the theor theoretical model, I'll put it at isotype because this is a strongly androgenic trait, and we don't have a lot of... Uh, 3-alpha HSD or other enzymes that break down DHT, um, you know, in uh, in the skull. So that one for now is the time until more research comes out. Um, in fact, uh, let's see. Using that logic, I should have done the same thing for a clavicle width. Uh, but that's the thing. We don't have studies comparing clavicle width. Yeah, I'm going to put same thing at this one at the time because we don't have a lot of studies comparing the effects of DHT versus testosterone on clavicle width um so but in theory so i'm going to put that to because in theory this is driven by the androgen receptor mainly and obviously dht is more potent so and we also don't have a lot of three alpha hsds and other dht breaking enzymes in that region so for now it's a tie until more research comes out whereas the rest of these we have a lot of research on okay next uh testosterone's effects on your penis right having a penis right uh again this one <laughs> DHT marks, right? If you're born with mutations in your 5-alpha reductase or where you're not making enough DHT, you're actually going to have either a micropenis, a vagina, or something in between. So, yes, thank DHT for your manhood. Now, obviously, after puberty, uh, during puberty, your body's going to produce enough testosterone to make up for the low DHT, and that's going to make your penis finally grow. But in some of those cases, they never get full, they never achieve full length of the penis, right? Um, so, in fact, DHT is also used to treat micropenis, funny enough. So, that one, you got to thank DHT, boys. Uh, now, of course, after puberty, then, yeah, you already have a penis. So, a lot of these effects uh, can be maintained without DHT after puberty, but that's moving the goalposts. All right, next, uh, let's see. Testosterone's effects on your strength. Ooh, that one is tough. That one is tough. I'm going to put that one at it's a tie simply because we do know the pathways to which DHT activates uh, increases strength and force output, both in rats and humans. Uh, but I'm not going to put it higher simply because even with low DHT levels, you can still maintain some amount of strength. Again, it's huge variations. It all depends on genetic polymorphisms, mainly in 3-alpha HSD and similar enzymes. So as of right now, it's a tie. Also, when we look at steroids, uh, if you compare DHT derivatives to testosterone derivatives, um, there's actually a big difference on average, right? There's some exception, but there's a big difference in the DHT compounds. The DHT compounds tend to produce more force output um, on average. Of course, there's some exceptions, you know, like especially with nandrolone derivatives and things like that or halotestin, blah, 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 you know, but on average, DHT derived compounds tend to be better at increasing force output. So I'm going to put that as a top for now because, like I said, even without DHT, your body can still find ways to increase force output. Next, we have uh, testosterone's effects on the length of your arms. You know, men have longer arms than women, mainly due to the effects of androgens during puberty. Uh, same thing, I'm going to put it at it's a tie because both androgens play a role. And obviously, DHT is the more powerful androgen there. Again, reason why it's not higher is what I explained earlier is because even with low DHT levels, you can still benefit from this as long as you have high testosterone levels. Um, next, we have uh, testosterone's effects on traps. Having huge traps, obviously, I'm going to put that one at testosterone wins because you do not need, as far as we know currently, you do not need a crap ton of DHT in order for that to happen. 
so that's going to go into testosterone wins. Same thing if you look at steroids, both DHT derivatives and androlone derivatives and testosterone derivatives will still give you that pronounced effect. So I'm not going to give that one to DHT for now. Um, well, actually, yeah, using that logic, I should put that as a tie because both androgens. Uh, oh, no, that's if I look at steroids. If I look at natties, then I'll have to give that one. To, yeah, if I look at just naturals, I have to give that one to testosterone mainly because of the extra conversion to estrogen, which is also anabolic. Um as long as you don't have too much of it, of course. Next, we have masculinizing the face. That one, I'm going to put this one at, oof, this one is tough. Um, it's a mainly androgenic trait. Uh, but if you look at people that have, th that's the issue with people that have 5 alpha reductase mutations is they still have DHT. They don't have zero DHT, right? Usually they have the mutation in the, um, uh, in the second enzyme, in number two, as opposed to one and three. So this one is tough to say. So mm, masculinizing the face. I'm going to put that one at Isatai. I want to put it at DHT wins, but again, I'm trying to be objective and not biased when I make these videos. So I want to put it at Isatai for now because, again, it's an androgenic trait. Um, it is modulated by the androgen receptor, uh, which typically should give DHT a win. But because we don't have a lot of direct evidence on this, we only have theoretical models, I'm going to put it at Isatai. Next, we have uh, same thing, uh, testosterone's effects on the length of your legs. You know, testosterone increase. Men have longer legs than women. Again, mainly due to pubertal testosterone. That one, I'm also going to put it at its a tie because it is mainly uh, through the androgen receptor as well. Estrogen also play a role, but I explained that earlier. So that one is a tie. Uh, next, let's see. Well, actually, I should have put... God damn it, I should have put the Hangushin fetish at as well, using the logic of uh, androgen signaling. Mm. No, 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 because uh, you also need some form of estrogen, and DHT will not do that. But it's kind of confusing, because if you look at, that's the thing, the research on DHT and testosterone is so mixed, because if you look at studies where people actually inject DHT, and crush the estrogen and testosterone levels, they don't lose strength. So yeah, I'm gonna put that one at it's a tie. Uh, mainly because when people crush their testosterone and estrogen artificially and get injected with DHT, I covered that study in the past, they don't experience a drop in uh, hand grip strength. So, uh, as well as leg extension strength. So I'm gonna put that one at it's a tie. Um, whereas these, we, we have a lot of evidence. So, all right, next. Next, making sure your face is not, fem you know, feminized. Obviously, DHT wins. That is mainly through the androgen receptor. Um, next, making sure that you have, uh, make sure that you don't have breasts. I already explained in the video on the androgen receptor, uh, the whole thing about men actually being females in the womb until week 8 to 10 when the SRI gene activates, blah, blah, blah. So get caught up on that. Watch my video called 20 Reasons Why the Androgen Receptor is More Important than Testosterone or something like that. I forgot what the fuck I called it. But that one, you do not need DHT for that. Um, so let's see. I'm going to put that one as a tie because both testosterone and DHT uh, are enough to counteract the effects of estrogen on breast development. Obviously, DHT is stronger, but again, to avoid being biased, I'm going to put it as a tie. Uh, let's see, let's see. Now, again, when you if you have gyno, DHT is obviously the main androgen to prevent it simply because it won't convert to estradiol, but that's a whole different, it's a whole different premise. I, sorry, I'd be moving the goalposts if I actually use that as a, as a criteria. Next, we have, uh, testosterone's effects on bone density. That one, I gotta say, the testosterone wins because like I said, you need both testosterone and some estrogen. Um, so, and in fact, when people are injected with DHT to the point where they have low testosterone, low estrogen, but high DHT, they tend to lose, again, keyword here, they tend to lose some bone density because of the crushed estrogen. So that one testosterone definitely wins. Um, let's see, uh, the 2D to 4D ratio, that one again, I'm going to put this one at its a tie because both androgens, um, play a role in this. Let's see, uh, nice acne. Oh. Yeah, that one DHT wins. That one is mainly DHT, unfortunately. <laughs> That's probably the reason why DHT gets such a bad rap, right? Because a lot of the things that we don't want actually come from DHT. Um, so let's see. Next, hair loss. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. That one. Come on. Come on. Got to be objective. We all know this one. That one is DHT by far. 
uh, it's the main androgen involved in hair. Like that doesn't mean that you can't lose hair with, but you know, um, that doesn't mean that testosterone doesn't play a role, uh, depending on again how much testosterone you have. But DHT is the main androgen behind hair loss. And again, it's not because of DHT itself; it's simply because of the androgen receptor. Right? DHT is just more powerful at activating the androgen receptor. And when you're balding due to genetic and environmental lifestyle factors, blah blah blah, you have a crap ton of uh, DHT accumulating in your scalp and your androgen receptor in your scalp is obviously more sensitive. So long story short, yeah, that one is DHT by far, you know. But like I said, inverter you good, right? There's a good and bad with every hormone. Uh, let's see. Next, making sure that you have big testicles. In fact, let me rephrase that. Making sure that you have testicles, period. That one is DHT. That one is DHT. If you have low DHT levels, you actually, like I said earlier, you're born without external genitalia. Um, during puberty, they're finally going to come out. Your balls are literally going to drop. Um, but DHT is the main androgen at birth responsible for making sure that you have external genitalia, meaning your balls and your penis actually come out as opposed to stay inside. Next, making sure that you have, uh, well, not making sure, but that's just a side effect, but having longer feet. Men have longer feet than women. And again, this is through uh, testosterone during puberty. That one is, it's a tie, obviously. Uh, between both hormones next you have having larger hands same thing that one is it's a tie uh, next you have uh, testosterone's effects on speed and power output that one once again it's a tie both androgens play a role in that for the reasons i explained earlier next you have testosterone's effects on jumping ability that one is also a tie right because the androgen receptor plays a role in this um, next, you have testosterone's effects on making sure you do not have a vagina. Yeah, that's correct. And I explained that in the previous video on the androgen receptor. For those of you guys who don't know, once again, men are naturally, men are by default females in the womb until we expose to, until the SOI gene activates and until androgens come out, blah, blah, blah. So if you have a complete androgen, it's CAIS, complete androgen insensitivity syndrome, where your body does not respond to testosterone or DHT, you are actually going to have a vagina um, on the outside so anyway so making sure that you do not have a vagina that one is again dht wins because dht is the main androgen once again that makes sure that you have a uh, external genitalia so that one dht wins again until puberty you know where testosterone is high enough to make up for the low dht so most of the people that have that unfortunate mutation um are raised as girls i made several posts about that look it up it's called graver doses blah 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 um, next, obviously, making sure that you have a functioning, normal functioning prostate, right? For fertility, for uh, sperm function, blah, 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 DHT marks. That is main. Actually, I'm going to put that DHT wins because if you have high enough testosterone, that can compensate. But that's mainly uh, driven by DHT. In fact, no, I'm going to put that DHT mark because DHT is the most powerful androgen in the prostate, which unfortunately leads to prostate cancer. Next, we have making sure that your body develops as a male instead of a female. By the way, these are two men that have complete androgen sensitivity syndrome. They do not respond to androgen, so their body forms as the default uh, body type, which is female for the human race. Uh, that one is it's a tie, right? Because uh, you obviously need the androgen receptor for that. DHT is going to be the more potent activator, as I always say, um, but testosterone can also uh compensate right so people that have um low dht levels they still develop as male apart from the genitals that i mentioned and um doing puberty the, you know the rest gets fixed whatever so all right that's it guys i hope that answers most of your questions about the differences between dht and testosterone as far as the physical effects of testosterone go i'm going to make another one for the mental effects all right i'm out of here